Hey there and welcome to your art lesson crates. My name is Karen and I'm your instructor for today. Today we're going to work on Goofy. He is a lovable character uh, from Mickey Mouse uh, from Disney and he he's part human part dog. I'm not quite sure what he is but he is a fun loved uh, character and we're going to go ahead and draw him. So let's get started. We're going to use a canvas, but if you're more comfortable practicing on paper first, by all means, do so. And then once you're comfortable, you can put it onto a canvas. The canvas is just wood wrapped in fabric. It's been stapled and the sides are empty, so you can paint all the way around. If you paint your sides, it's called gallery wrapping, and that is uh, a very economical way of hanging your artwork. You're going to notice I've been painting a lot lately, so sorry I'm kind of covered, but I get in my art. We're going to go ahead and start with his head. We want to block it out, softly drawing it. You don't want dark lines or you won't be able to erase them. I have my canvas up and down, which is also called vertical. And we're going to get started. First, we want to do, first thing we want to do is block out where we want his head to be. Use your whole arm to create that circle. He's going to have his hat coming off the page. He's going to have his top of the mouth and bottom of the mouth. And they're all about the same size. And then he's going to have a neck, a shoulder, and an arm and part of a hand. All right, so I have it kind of sketched in. If that's confusing to you, if you work better by just looking at it and going with it, we can do it that way as well. I'm about to get started with that. Blocking is just a really good way of making sure you get it all in. Because if you made the head too big, you might not have the nose or you might not have the rest of the body. So if you just kind of guesstimate where you want things, it does help in your overall composition. Let's go ahead and figure out where his nose is going to be, which is the tip of his uh, snout. It is a very round oval. It is almost circular. And there is a shine on it. It is sitting on a mound. That then halfway down it comes out and swerves up. All right. Now here, where this mound and the circle meet, about halfway up your mound, make another mound. Come down, make another mound. So you should have one, two, three little mounds. Under here, you're going to have just one big smile. He has a chunky tooth and a chunky tooth. Let's go ahead and do his bottom mouth of the mouth. It comes down around and meets up with the tooth and give him the top of a heart for a tongue. At the other end of your tooth, come around, scoop it, that's his bottom lip. Picasso, the studio cat, is saying hello to everyone. And let's go ahead and do a chin. Comes down and up and out and around. Kind of a strange little shape there. Mine's a little shaky, so I'm going to try and do them a little bit, a little better. He has two large eyes. Now the first eye is about halfway through the second mound, or, uh, yeah, well, one, two, second mound. Large eye. Pupil. 
and he has another one that's coming out of that one. Large eye pupil. He has eyebrows. One, two, the back of a head, and long floppy ears. This ear, you can't see this side, but you can see it down here. We're going to go ahead and work on his hat. It just from the top of the head, comes out at a slight angle. From above the eyebrow, it comes out. Close it with a very subtle frown. Put a little belt. And then poof out. He's got a neck. But it's attached to a little bit of black skin. So give him a little bump right there at that little joint and come on down. Let's curve it because he's wearing a turtleneck. So now we're going to circle this with a couple of partial circles to look like a turtleneck. Now I had originally drawn my shoulder up there. I was off. Not the end of the world. That's why I drew it softly. We're going to draw his arm. Bump that meets up with the turtleneck. Comes down and up and out. Go ahead and close off his clothes. Start from where the shoulder and the turtleneck meet. Come on out for your vest. We're going to draw part of the vest here. And he's going to have his arm coming out. Give it an oval the top of the hand he has two small ovals we'll give him a thumb and it goes off the page there is our cute little goofy now you can sharpie him if you want to or use a permanent ink you don't have to I like to. I find that it helps me fill in a little bit better. I usually tell everyone that you pretend that your um, permanent ink is your train and your pencil lines are your tracks. Stay on your tracks. Do not go off the tracks. If you go off the tracks, you're going to mess it up. And then if you mess it up, you're going to have to figure out somehow to fix it. Oh, you know what? I forgot one thing. At the top of his mouth, he has a, a little frown that makes it look like he's smiling. It's kind of ironic, huh? All right, I'm going to go ahead and pause this video. I'm going to finish outlining. And you can do so as well if you choose to. And if not, just sit tight. I'll be back in just a second. All right, so Goofy is all finished, and it's time to paint him. I'm going to be using blue and green, but you can use any colors you want to for your background. Honestly, you can use any colors you want to for any part that you want to. You're going to need a napkin to dry off your brush. You're going to want to clean it and roll your brush on your napkin. And that's how you dry your brush. Don't dab it. If you dab your brush, you're going to ruin your bristles. You want to keep them nice and long and skinny. So I'm going to go ahead and start with my inside color. And paint anything that's the sky and then we'll worry about him after. 
Now I did get a little bit in him. I can either wipe it away or I can just paint over it. It's not the end of the world. Okay, so I want, I'm going to do kind of a starburst effect coming out from him. I think it'll be a cool little look. You don't have to, but it is a neat look. I do encourage you to try. And if you don't like it, then don't do it again. To do the starburst, you're just going to take your brush strokes and have them flip up, flip up. So I'm going to fill in the parts that I want a definite blue. Definite blue, definite blue. Fill it in, fill it in, and then start dragging out. I know it looks a little funny now, but when we put the complementary color, well, it's not a complementary, it's a, the color right next to it on the color wheel. When we put it next to it, he's going to look cool. I'm going to do it up top too. Maybe a little bit up here. Definitely some out here. I'm going to turn my whole canvas. Don't, don't just try and contort your body around it because your canvas can move. Some people prefer to work on easel. If you do like easels, I do have a couple recommendations. Michael sells a, um, a wooden one that is really good. It's a tabletop. It's, it is adjustable. It's probably, when it's not on sale, it's about $30. But every other week, Michael's has coupons, and you usually get them for about 50% off. The other one, which is the one that I use more than anything, is their metal fold-up easel. It's really good for children, especially because you can fold it up and put it away. And so it's not in the way. So now I've got my background done with like a spread out look. I'm going to leave my brush dirty. I'm going to dip it in my green. And I'm going to start painting out. It's going to pick up any wet blue and drag it out. But it's also going to drag some of the green in. And it's going to make it look kind of a starburst tie-dye. Which I think is a very neat look make sure that you fill in all of the little spots they're not going to go away paint does not spread out as it dries it is what it is now you're also going to notice that your brush strokes show if you don't like that you'll have to put a couple of coats i don't mind it i think a painting should look like it's a painting but some people are more into the realism look now it wouldn't be logical for this because we're painting a cartoon character he is not a real person, place, or thing. He is just a cartoon. So he has black outlines. He has exaggerated facial features and, and long neck and all of that. So trying to paint him realistic, realistically is silly. All right, so I'm going to spin him. Keep going, a little more green. We're almost there. Now, knowing that I'm painting green up to my edge, I would recommend you continue your green around the sides, all along here. I'm not going to do it for the, the tutorial, but I do recommend that you paint that. Now you're going to clean off your brush really, really, really well. He has a green hat, but we just painted the background green. What can we do? You can do what's called tinting. You take green, you put it down on a, I have it on tin foil, you put it on any flat surface, touch in some black, barely any black, mix them together. You're making a very dark green. They just fill that in. All right, so he's got his green hat. I'm going to clean off my brush. 
and I'm going to go ahead and take my black, fill in his mouth. Hi, Picasso. Fill in the mouth. I totally went into the tongue, so I'm going to have to paint on top of that, but that's okay. Paint in the nose. Don't paint your shine, but if you accidentally do, just put a white shine on top after it's dry. And the reason we do shines is to make it look like it's rounded and wet. We'll do the eyes. Last eye. Remember, if I go too fast for you, please just pause the video, catch up. We have eyebrows. I'm going to turn it so I don't put my hand in it. Another eyebrow. Take your time. It is not a race. I mean, you're going to rush through this and sit there and go, huh, I'm done. When you could have taken your time and really just done a Mac Daddy awesome job on it. Remember, I've been doing this for a very, very long time. So I'm a little bit more comfortable painting. If you're not comfortable painting, take it slow. He sure do, does have a lot of black to him. Okay, so let's do his ear here. This ear. Now it does take practice to get good at drawing specific characters that are well known. They were designed by a creative team or sometimes just by one individual person, but typically it's a team of people that come up with a character and it's done a specific way. Well, the problem is I'm a different artist than you are and you're a different artist than they are. so. Me trying to recreate something that I did not create in the first place is difficult. It takes a lot of practice. That's why when you go to draw a princess or something like that, that's a well-known and it doesn't look like her, you think, what did I do wrong? Well, you just got to practice. It takes lots and lots of practice. All right, so then we just have one more bit of vest. And all of the black will be done. Now once the vest is done, we're going to want to blow dry the picture. Or let it sit and dry, air dry, because we want to be able to paint the next part. We don't want your black going into it. So go ahead and clean your brush now. Pause the video. Blow dry it really well. And the way you can tell it's dry is it's not shiny anymore and then come back to the video. All right, so my picture is mostly dry and I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next part, which is red for the tongue. And red for the shirt. Stay in your lines. You drew your lines for a reason. Don't go outside of them. Fill it in. Remember, fill in those little dots. They're not going to go away. 
I had a little wet spot, but that's okay. That made a little bit of a shadow. Let's do collar. I'm really taking my time with this. I don't want to mess it up. I do have to apologize for the delay on this month's packaging. Um, corporate had the packages ready, but Miss Karen was in an accident. I was hit by a car, and so I was laid up for a few days, actually more than a few days. So I was unable to record your videos at the beginning of the month. So I do apologize and hope that you understand that it was not intentional that packages were late. It was just I was laid up. All right, the last thing we want to do is fill in his face. We're going to take some brown and some white, both colors on the brush at the same time, and fill it in. If it's too dark brown, add more white. You just want kind of a flesh color, nothing too, too dark.